So hello everyone, you're all very welcome to this evening's Grass 10 and Pasture Base Ireland webinar. The title of tonight's webinar is Building Grass for an Extended Grazing Season. My name is Joseph Dunphy and I'm delighted to be joined once again on these webinars by my Grass 10 colleague John Douglas and Michal O'Leary from Pasture Base Ireland. I'm also delighted to be joined tonight by uh, dairy farmers uh, David Brady from County Cavan and John Galvin from County Cork both winners in our 20, uh, 2020 Grassland Farmer of the Year competition, and they will give us their experience um, on managing grass in the, the, the autumn of the year throughout tonight's webinar. So just um, a quick reminder, there's a poll uh, coming up on your screen. There's two questions on it. It would be great if we could get some feedback in terms of your own, you know, I suppose the the, 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 the covers that you built on your on your own farms throughout the autumn and maybe maybe some of the limitations that you know you feel in terms of uh, in terms of building covers on your on, on your own farm so just for for people who are are new to our webinars um all our webinars that we have have done and tonight's webinar will be is being recorded and will be available to watch back so if you google chagas grass 10 uh, it'll bring you to the Chagas public website and on the left hand side of the page you'll see the webinar subheading but if you click into the webinar subheading the webinars that we have all that we've you know we we have recorded since last december and all through the springtime will all be there along with a pdf of the the slides and maybe some questions that were asked throughout the evening so as we you know i suppose without doubt it's been a, a very very difficult summer both in terms of grass or so a year altogether really in terms of grass supply and grass quality and just as many farmers are beginning to you know return to good grass growth on farm we're already entering the early part of August and beginning to look at autumn grazing targets so it's it, it's kind of seen through all throughout this summer that you know the summer has just flown by without us having uh you know a three or four week period of settled grass growth so throughout tonight's webinar this is the structure that we'll, we'll, we're going to go through. Michal O'Leary is going to give us a bit of an update from the newsletter and one or two pieces from, from, from Pasture Base Ireland data. We'll then have a look at the benefits of building grass on your farm during August uh, to extend the grazing season. We'll have a look at, in particular, at some of these grass, the, the targets and achieving them and, you know, I suppose how to go about achieving the targets. We will then move over to and have a quick chat with John, John Galvin here and David Brady are our two dairy farmers here tonight and have a quick look at their grass budgets and their plan for the for the autumn of the you know or the, for, for, for the autumn. And then we'll have a quick look at before we finish up on the response to fertilizer, um, you know, for, for to, I suppose to, to drive grass production throughout August. So Michal, I might just throw it over to you for a, a minute just to get a, a bit of a, an update on what you're seeing. Uh, out on farm at the minute, trying to what's coming in on Pasture Base Ireland. Yeah, thanks very much, Joseph, and good evening, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us again this evening. Um, as you already said, I suppose, Joseph, look, 2021, I suppose, it has it has been its ups and downs when it comes to grass growth. Um, we're either getting too much rainfall or it's too dry or too warm, and every week seems to be different. So I suppose that has its challenges. Um, national picture, look, there, there's no surpluses out there at the moment. Um, grass is very tight on farms. Um, good bit of supplement going in, probably three and a half, four kilos of supplement um, going in. But I suppose there is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, nearly all places have got uh, rain now at this stage. So I suppose that's helping the situation. And this soil moisture deficit is, is reducing. Um, soil temperatures are high. Um, so I suppose... As a result of, of that combination, I suppose grass growth should kick this kick on this uh, this week um, coming. Growth last week was 45, which is very sluggish for the time of the year. Um, but I think the big thing for, for everyone, on the, especially on the call, um, is to keep walking their farm. Um, we're, we're probably between, we're heading into the autumn. Um, you probably have a week or two now to kind of set up your farm for the autumn. And now is the chance to maybe take some action. Maybe a couple of paddocks need to be cleaned out a bit better to get the quality right in them. So definitely keep measuring, I think, is, is the biggest, uh, the big message. And growth should increase in the majority of farms for next week. John, just I might just throw a quick question to you. Um, just maybe... Uh, it might be over on more more your side of the the country, but 
farmers that maybe only have a small a small amount of rain got um you know maybe maybe a little bit of advice for farmers still struggling to build farm cover sorry joe yeah yeah so there's up until i suppose today i'd say a lot of places hadn't got rain i i'm, I'm not sure any or miss rain but i suppose for farms some farms have a very low farm average farm cover at the minute so you can see the average there 650 you know, there's going to be farms probably at 850 and that, and there's going to be farms at 450 and that. So, you know, we're talking about building into autumn. We're not trying, we're not being as was ignorant of people that, that are starting from a low base. But I suppose we're we're um, hopeful that the growth will kick on. So I was on a on a farm there today in there and in the last three days since the rain late last week, it has grown 100 a day. So we're getting, we are getting a burst of growth coming now for, for this rain. That will probably happen over the next week on most farms. Um, so hopefully that will lift any, I suppose, farm covers that were low and bring them back up to sort of where they should be our average for, for this time of year. Um, for farms that suppose, didn't get the rain and the, and the growth is still low and average farm cover is still low, I suppose building grass for them at the moment is probably something that they'll, they'll have to look at later on in August. And at the moment, it's just about holding their farm cover at, at, a, at a, you know above 500 kilos of dry matter per hectare. And if they can do that, once the rain does come, well, then they'll, they can, I suppose, exploit the growth that comes in after that. But if they're behind, uh, I suppose, in terms of putting an extra feed to start building, it's probably a break-even exercise. So it's really, you know, as we get into it later on, we're really trying to grow grass um, and bank it up uh, and build grass that way rather than sort of putting an additional supplement to build it. So we just have to hold tight for now for farms that haven't and um, wait for the growth to pick up. So those farms that have got rain, you know, a good bit of rain, um, after that last dry spell should be, I suppose, walking their farm twice this week because things will turn around very quickly. Perfect stuff, John. Thanks a million for that. So look at the supplement. Well, you know, we'll, probably getting back to that relationship we talked about earlier in the year, John, between between growth and demand and, and farms that are still struggling and are just going to have to to keep to keep that demand figure and, and, and increase the supplement to keep the farm the car you know to match match yeah. match growth versus demand. And it's been look it has been a tough year as Michal said and we can see from the graph there ups and downs. So you know in terms of supply and quality this year has been a, a fairly a fairly difficult one. But uh, maybe Michal you have more to add there. Yeah exactly I suppose after a slow May I suppose it really took off uh, grass started to hit um quality deteriorated um, the air will say the first of June got, got an average growth rate for the country of 80 um, then declined again then I suppose increased around the, the middle of July again grass got extremely stressed even after grass started to head out um, and here we are today at, at a growth rate of 45 um, thankfully I suppose the reproductive stage has passed um, so I suppose we're, we're into the vegetative state now of the, the grass plant um, so hoping again for for a bounce to come and, and I suppose to alleviate some of the problems with, with again on farm today and a lot of guys are grazing covers of, of a thousand and they're just a couple of days short of grass so um, hopefully they'll get the bounce and things will straighten up after a bit. Um, I suppose again just the objective of tonight I suppose is just, just to I suppose extend um, to build grass in order to extend our grazing season. And when we look at, um, I suppose, data coming in from pasture base, and this is 2019 data, um, we can see that there's three different stocking rates across the bottom, uh, two and a half cows per hectare, three cows per hectare, and three and a half cows per hectare. Um, we have a target there of roughly um, you know, 500 kilos of dry matter in the middle of August for, for the guys stocked to 2.5. Um, and then when we increase up to 3.5, we have, a, a, I suppose, a, a target of, 770 of a farm cover and I suppose we can see um, on, on the 15th of August in, twi in 2019 you know guys were pretty much on target um, I suppose the guys stock lower all right had a good bit more grass um, or rather other than the, when compared to the target um, but then I suppose if we move on a, a in, a, in a month's time into the middle of September um, we can see that we're well off the target um, across all stocking rates um, so I suppose this, I suppose, has reinforced why we're having the, I suppose, the webinar, and I suppose we're trying to get farmers, um, probably to make make probably a, a plan to, for the next couple of months, um, and trying to build cover and try to exploit growth that we're going to have over the next couple of weeks, and I suppose using that into um into September, 
and into into October. So I suppose look, farmers can miss out on the target, um, but I suppose me measuring weekly, I suppose, is key um, in order to, to reach these targets. Um, I suppose it, you know it is interesting as well that the guys stock relatively low, uh, two point five cows an hectare or a cow to the acre. Um, that they, they are well off the target there. They're about 200, 200 kilos of dry matter um, across uh, per hectare um, off the target. So I suppose, again, hopefully we, we'll, get, um, we'll get some of the guys' thoughts on, on building grass. And I suppose if you have any questions, uh, there's a Q&A function down at the bottom of the screen um, and type in your questions there and we, we'll answer them prior. Great stuff. Thanks a million, Michal. I'll throw it over to you there now, John. <clears throat> Um, so I suppose we come back and Michal maybe set the scene slightly there. We come back to what the objectives of autumn grazing are. Uh, and I suppose I, I'd see this as two pieces two pieces of this jigsaw. The first piece is we build grass early in the autumn. So during August and maybe early September, we're into the building phase. Um, and now I know people maybe, some people are put off when they hear the word building because they automatically think of heavy covers and maybe bad weather and, you know, trying to graze out. Um, difficult um, covers of grass during tricky weather. So, you know, it, it's it's not really. I'm, I'm suppose we're trying to move away from the I mean, the negatives around this, um, and we're trying to, I suppose, bank, bank grass, and we're trying to set up the farm that we can utilize it. Okay, so looking at it more positively. The second part of that jigsaw then is extending your grazing in, in the autumn time, uh, and setting up the farm to have more days of grass in the springtime. So during October, November. This is your closing phase. So if we close the farm up properly, we can uh, extend into the back end and graze again early in the springtime. And for different farms, this is going to be different and we'll go through the targets now shortly. But each farm can improve. Uh, and, uh, you know, and all farmers who have worked on this will have seen improvements on their own farm. So, you know, so we can't sort of classify that it's it's only relevant to dry soils or only relevant to lower stock farms or whatever. It's it's, it's relevant to everyone and everyone can improve. And I suppose that's the, the key thing. And I think it'll take a couple of years for people to get to that stage where they've, where they've actually um, hit a sweet spot with it. So it does take a bit of work and a bit of time, but it's, it's well worth it and the benefits are, 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 um, are well known, I suppose. So if we move on, I suppose it, this is a question I put to everyone here on the, on the webinar tonight. If you could give me 40 euro today, and you are guaranteed to give, give you 110 euro back in three months time or two or three months time, how much would you invest? How much would you give me? Um, and I suppose what I mean by this is at the moment, grass is, is currently worth about 40 euro a ton to grow. I suppose the value of the grass is worth about 40 euro a ton because grass growth is still fairly good uh, and, and you know everything is in our, in our favor still and we can still grow well into September. So, the grass is cheap enough to grow. However, in the autumn time, we're, we're at a stage of the year where the grass growth obviously slow down. And so I suppose replacing that grass in the autumn time, it's a lot more expensive. So 110 euro. So that's based off the, the, the value of the grass in the autumn from the PPI. So this slide here shows the pasture profit index and that's the, the weighted yield for the summer and autumn, autumn grass. So that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to basically bank grass that's been grown now cheaply in August and save it then for later on in the autumn time. Okay. So as you can see here, we're not trying to build grass from adding in any additional supplement. It's just about building it from what's grown on the farm. And I suppose the best way we can do that is by starting on time. And starting on time means for higher stock farms really means starting this week. And then for lower stock farms, maybe later on in the month. But really it's about starting on time. So and it might by starting on time, it might mean not cutting out maybe a, a paddock that goes above 1400 in the next couple of weeks. That's what starting on time means. So we're moving and Joe will, Joe will go through, we're moving from that summer wedge into the autumn phase. Uh, and that's what we need to work on. So if we look at the what's the benefit of that extra grass, well, every day that the cow, cow or livestock unit really, so that refers to you know dry stock farms as well, every livestock unit, it's 180. Uh, per livestock unit per day in the in the back end of the year, and it's it's about two seventy per cow uh, per day in the springtime, or about two euro per livestock unit in the springtime in the dry stock scenario. So, you know, if you've if you have fifty livestock units and you can stay out for an extra 
10 days um it, it starts to add up into a, a lot of money so for let's say for 100 cows or 100 livestock units in the autumn time it's nearly worth 200 euro a day so that's that's a lot of money to be to be saved uh so if we look at the um the, the chart here so the green line is the daily pasture growth rate so that's the growth on the farm i think this is from valley hayes farm so you can see here that the growth rate shoots up and it sort of drops off so that's typical of i suppose growth in the northern half of the country it might be a bit more prolonged in the, in the south and the red line here is the daily herd feed demand so we can see here in the springtime there's a there's a deficit summer time there's surplus and then in the back end there's a deficit so what we're trying to do is basically from from here from august is is bank this surplus here instead of taking it out as bales leave it grow on and allow it to fill in here so reducing that cost of supplementing in the autumn time and, and getting more days of grass so it's going to have a, a big impact on farm profit um probably move on there joe so and as it uh, was on top of that and you know i suppose slurry storage is and will be becoming more under pressure um you know a lot of talks about derogation and stuff and slurry storage so if you can get cows out for an extra couple of weeks longer we're putting a plan in place and we we have you know a couple of weeks might sound like a long time but we've worked with farms that have maybe you know over the last couple of years done an extra three weeks outside so that has a big impact on you know how many bales are left around the yard for feeding high quality bales left for feeding in the springtime how much less slurry pressure i suppose they're under in the tanks and allows farmers then to pick their time that they want to spread slurry in the springtime rather than maybe being forced to spread after the the um the opening date um obviously a lot reduce a lot less labor um i suppose with cows you're cleaning cubicles or your bedding and uh, straw a lot of work feeding you know you know you know how you know farmers know how, how much time they've spent feeding out bales at the moment if they have to, if they're in a deficit you know all that starts to happen again once you go inside cows are healthier and happier outside probably a benefit to their body condition score and you know, the farmer has a better peace of mind. You know, I, I know one farmer who was very happy the cows were out for another few weeks. It just meant that any jobs they were doing around the yard, there was a bit of peace and quiet. And uh, there wasn't, you know, cows roaring at them every every uh, minute of the day. So the other benefits, of, I suppose, of building grass, there's still plenty of grass for the springtime. So we, we, we're sort of balancing. We're not robbing Peter to pay Paul. We're, we're in a balancing act. We're to close up the farm property. So there's still grass for springtime. And the grass worth a lot more in the springtime. So... 270 uh, euro a day for about 100 cows or about 200 euro a day would say for 100 livestock units on a, on a, on a beef farm or sheep farm and I, I suppose just from working with farmers in the in the grass 10 groups there's a, there's better job satisfaction and pride and i feel this was a job well done um you know and i suppose a bit of patriotism that you're doing better for the environment as well so you can see here every additional week at grass reduces the greenhouse gas emissions by one percent on dairy farms and uh, every 10, day, 10 days of grass reduces greenhouse gas emissions by 1% on beef farms. So we're, we're doing a bit for the country and there's also lower ammonia emissions at, at grass versus housing. Again, and that comes back to a lot less slurry. Um, uh, so cows or cattle urinating on, on concrete in, in a shed. There's losses there. There's losses when that slurry has been stored in the tank. And then there's losses at spreading time. So we're reducing all that, which is better for the environment too. Joe. Good stuff. Uh, just yeah, I just I suppose just to, to to repeat that again, John, for what you know, I suppose what you were what you were discussing there. The the, the key thing about what you are on about there in autumn is that we're 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 building grass at four cent to to you know if we get decent growth rates, build it at four cent then and feed it back to the cow at eleven cent. So it's you know it's it, it's a it's a it's a very good investment to make. And if we have to start maybe putting in silage i know it's, farmers might be might be might be feeding silage at the minute or feeding concentrate just to kind of keep farm you know in, in particular farms that are dry but if we have to feed silage or feed meal to try and build those covers it's more of a a, a break-even scenario john is that correct <clears throat> yeah it is like so if you if you had to put in we'll say three kilos of meal and three kilos of silage in order to build and we'll say later later on in august or early september time if you worked out, I suppose, the average uh, cent per kilo of cost of that diet versus, we say, for instance, 16 kilos of grass and two kilos of meal, you know, you're working out about 11 cent a kilo for that diet that has silage and extra meal coming into it. So if it's if that's if that's the cost of it, then well, then, you know, later on in the autumn time, 
you know, it's only worth 11 cents anyway. So it, it's, it might be a bit break even. There is some benefit, I suppose. You will, if you do build the covers to a certain extent, you will grow more grass in the autumn time, possibly, you know, about somewhere between maybe a quarter to half a ton more. Um, so you do get that benefit. All right. But, you know, in terms of, you know, putting in feed to get to, you know, are you feeding it in August or feeding it in November? That's probably the, the throw up. So it is a bit break even, Joe. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's, it's doing it in August is the, is the, is the key thing. So, so I suppose, look at just to go through a few slides before we, 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 we get into the thick of things with, with the, the budgets, with the, with the, with the two lads that are on here with us this evening, but it just takes a little bit of a change of focus now as we move into August and, you know, as we as we as we kind of said from 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 the start, this has not been an easy summer in terms of of, of managing grass. And you know, we've been looking at pre grazing yields all the time. We're looking at the grass wedge. You know, people may kind of trying to keep on top of things every four and five days throughout this 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 year. And you know, as we said, grass growth up and down throughout the throughout the last few months. You know, typically looking at cover per cow, an average farm cover as we move through the summer. But what we would encourage people now as we move into autumn is to com- complete a, a grass budget on Pasture Base Ireland. And we have a webinar done previously back earlier in the in the in the uh, in the springtime on, you know, creating a, a grass budget and following that grass budget through throughout an autumn or a spring period. So if you're new to budgeting, it's no harm to go back and have a look at that recording. It's it's all available there on on, on the grass tin on the grass tin page on the Chagas Public website. We also we look at a grass budget. We look at extending the rotation length as we move into as we move into August, um, and then the target farm cover that you want to build. And as we, as John said earlier on, you know this isn't if you're new to this. This isn't about going to eleven hundred straight away or a thousand straight away for your farm. It's about building the picture up on your farm. If you're on dry soil, is my grazing infrastructure good enough? You know. You know, number no, number of different factors there. Is my attitude right for 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 autumn graze? And how can I build the covers on the right on the right paddocks? And over a couple of year period, build up your own experience in terms of managing those heavier covers in the autumn. So it's not just something that you're going if you're new to it that it, we're we're asking you to go to overnight. It's about building your experience and building the grazing infrastructure on the farm to get there eventually. Okay, but the one constant is to keep walking the farm every week. Okay. So the key tools for, for autumn management is the weekly farm walk using a grass budget, which we'll be seeing in a minute. The infrastructure, you know, cannot be, you know, it, 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 it's, it's so important that we have, if we want to go, if we want to go at autumn, it's the exact same as the springtime. If we don't have the grazing infrastructure right, if we don't have the roadways, the, the, the spur roadways off, if we don't have the multiple access points, it's going to become very difficult like it is in the springtime. Um, we, you know, we need, a, I suppose, farmers with positive mindset to autumn grazing and then the knowledge that of the rotation length and the targets for, for you as you move through the autumn, because it is a movable feast as we move through August and into September. So, so what we're trying to do is we're, we're trying to grow more, grow more grass than you need now to eat later on. And I suppose the, the plant physiology is, is what's allowing us to do that. We're moving from the reproductive phase in, 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 in mid-July uh to to the vegetative stage so grass that we build from now on you know good perennial rye grass gra- you know receded ground will grow very, very very leafy grass as we move into the autumn of the year so we're trying to we're trying to build clean covers throughout the autumn so again it's not maybe one thing that is going to is going to you know, build grass in our farm. It could be a, a, a multitude of increasing supply on your farm and reducing demand. So if we look at, we start in, we start in August and we will be looking at a, a table in a, in a few minutes, just in terms of, you know, at your stock and rate, when should you start? But look at increasing the, the grazing area. So that could be bringing silage ground back in. Maybe there's paddocks that have had two cuts of silage taken off them and they're, look, they're looking to come back. They're coming back into the wedge in the next in the next couple of weeks. Bringing receded ground back in. Maybe something that was receded there earlier on in, in, in July. Um, you know, fertilizer, getting getting some fertilizer out, but, you know, blanket spread in the farm if 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 uh, if that's what's needed to, needed to be done, if if that's due to be due to be done now over the next over the next week or ten days, 
and then maybe more some more more long-term stuff in terms of soil fertility if our soil fertility is correct and we can improve that over the next couple of years we're going to get better growth rates on our farm as you know on the shoulders of the year okay and measuring on on pasture base is always going is is also going to help us but there's also a few other things on the demand side you know reducing the stocking rate you know calves or heifers on a milking platform you know they're just they're just keeping stocking rate up uh you know if 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 they're there on a on a on milking platform or on a on 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 are are there so they can be they can be moved to an outside block you know cull cows or cull stock you know other other stock can they be moved out increasing increasing silage can help or something like zero grazing in certain circumstances can help build as well a bit of everything will will get you there so this is just looking at a, a quick example of why and just uh, d- diving into why do we build in August instead of September. So we take a farm to stock to three livestock units per hectare and they're feeding two kilos a meal during August. If the average growth rate on that farm for the month is 60 and the demand is 48, every week during August, we're going to put 90 on our farm cover. OK, so that's the, the difference of 12 by seven days, 90. So every you know, or even 15 of a difference, difference between growth and demand is going to put 100 or just over 100 on our average farm cover every week. So over the four weeks of August, you know, on average, if it grows 60, that's going to put 360 on our average farm cover. So that's how we're able to build from, you know, a, a, a mid-season, you know, a mid-season, you know, 650, 700 up to a grass cover of maybe, you know, 950 or 1,000 on the 1st of September. If I was to kind of put a question to you, the growth during September for your farm, is it, you know, where, where, where is it? And if we were to only start building grass the last week of August or the first week of September, you know, where would that growth be relative to that demand of 48 kilos that we have there in the, on the screen? It's probably going to be, you know, first week or two of September might be a little bit higher than it, but as we kind of move into the middle part of September, depending on where you are in the country it could be pretty much could be pretty much at it so again it's just uh, it's just showing that the grass that we you know the, the grass we need to build it during the month of of august so these are the the chagas autumn autumn grazing targets um at the different stocking rates so at the stock rate of 2.5 3 and 3.5 okay so if we just if we just go down through the, the, I'm not going to go down through them all, but it's just to just to, to, to understand the table. So over on the top bar, we have the, you know, the date of, the, I suppose, the, the milestones that we kind of aim to hit as we move, a little, we move through the autumn, the cover per cow, the average farm cover and the rotation length. So we take a farm at 2.5, that's, you know, stocked at, uh, that's at a cover per livestock unit of a cover per cow of 180 on the 1st of August and a rotation length of 20 days, average farm cover of 450. As we move through the month of August, we're looking to extend that rotation length out to 25 days and then out to 30 days by the 1st of September and eventually ending up with a peak cover of maybe somewhere in around 1,000 kilos for that stock rate. And then, as you can see, as we move down towards the, 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 the stocking rates of 3 or 3.5, you can kind of see we're looking for a higher cover per cow and a higher average farm cover in that earlier August period. So if we take mid-August, if we take you know mid-August, we're looking uh, at the higher stocking rates to be at 750 or 250 per cow, you know, uh, and, and, and at... And at the 1st of September, we're looking for a thousand on the farm and the rotation is out to 30, 30 days. So um, it's just, they're just some of the targets to, to keep an eye on. Now on the, on, I suppose on heavy soils, it's just something to, 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 to keep an eye out for. We would, we would, we would be, you know, on heavy soils, we would aim to build an average farm cover to about 900 and no more. And I suppose the reason for that is that if the weather turns against us in the, in the, in the, in the back end of the year, that really and truly with an average farm cover of 900, we're probably, you know, we're probably roughly doubling that in terms of our pre-grades and yields. So we're probably looking at 17, 1800s, um, you know, fairly, fairly nice covers in terms of grazing um, throughout, you know, in, uh, in, in, in that early, late September, early October time. And then again, on the heavy soils, it's about flexibility and it, it might mean that there might be a couple of days that you don't get out at all. But, you know, it's having the flexibility and uh, very, very important, whether it be a dry farm or a wet farm, is that grazing infrastructure. 
Okay, so on the dry stock farms, um, just to just to just to mention that you're probably most 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 people will be looking at a, 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 a days ahead a days ahead target, um, probably coming from somewhere around 15, 16 days ahead at the minute on farms. We were looking that they would be building to somewhere in around 25 to 30 as they move through the month of September. Yeah. Just on that, Joe, sorry. Um, sorry, yeah, go on. Um, so there's, there's a couple of questions there. Maybe the lads, maybe the lads will answer them as well. Um, so there's one there. Do you not think that building too much covers can be an issue with wet weather conditions? And what would the maximum covers you would graze? Um, maybe just, John, before you we get into you, what, what would your answer to that be, John Galvin? Sorry, John, hold on for a second. You're on mute, You're on mute there, John, sorry. Repeat the question there, John. For... Sorry, um, John, I suppose, the, do you not think the building too much covers can be an issue with wet weather conditions and what would the maximum covers you would graze? Right, so um, based on our farm, which is a dry science farm, um, the maximum cover we will build will be um, 1,200 um, per hectare. Uh, so that gives us an average farm cover of um, uh, the highest cover we'll build will be about two and a half thousand per hectare, right? Yeah. So yeah, we can, it's a dry farm. We can graze it, uh, but we graze it in dry conditions, like in the springtime. We take them covers off uh, when the weather is good. Yeah, yeah. So you're targeting uh, the targeting the heavy covers, uh, John, on the the drier days and maybe on wetter yes, days, moving to some yeah, of the lighter covers. Absolutely, on the farm. absolutely, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, as I said, our average farmers cover is going to be twelve hundred, and we will take so that gives us highest cover two and a half thousand, and we will be taking them on the dry days. And we've often come out of them if we're inside them, the weather breaks, we leave and go back when the weather is not yeah. And John, like, does that affect, does that affect the regrowth on those paddocks there? I know we've probably, we've a couple of pictures of you grazing heavier covers, but do you think that building, you know, up to sort of close to two and a half, those covers? Yeah. Would, so would... we kind of delay that. So we delay, we peak our farm work roughly at about the 20th of September, right? So yeah. I would be slow to peak it before then. Because yes, yes, they will affect regrowth because the two and a half thousand will go back in last store. And if you're grazing two and a half thousand in the 10th of September, it slows everything down. So yeah. that's why our peak, we target our peak for roughly 20th, 25th of September. Yeah, yeah. And I, I suppose from the, the research point of view, we'd say we'd say like two and a half is the max. So, you know, if you, if you can keep keep most of them, or like if you're building to 1,200 of a of a max you're only going to be there for maybe a, could be a, a, a week at, at most so you would only have a couple of covers in that most of them are going to be back to closer to two so you know it shouldn't affect the regrow too much yeah yeah thanks john sorry michael yeah perfect john we, we might we might stay with you um you just might um introduce yourself john i suppose you, you're the winner of, of the yeah, grass yeah. and Fa farmer yes. of the year competition um under the sustainability um sustainability category for 2020 um, but you might just give a, a breakdown or, or who, who's farming there which and what what type of farming you're doing yeah so yeah thanks for having me on this evening Led. so yeah uh, John Gallon is the name we're farming in the parish of Kilmichael it's situated between McCroom and Dunmanway uh, we're here with my wife Yvonne and we have four boys from 11 down to four milking 100 100 cold sparrow it's a dry, it's a dry farm. Um, where we can we have a cross with herd with an EBI of 171. Um, the main objective in this farm is to produce as much grass as possible from milk, uh, milk as possible from grass. Um, we have the cow, we have cross with cows, as I said, they have genetics to produce high levels of, of milk solids. Uh, we calve them together, we breathe them in one block together, and we dry them off. Um, so yeah, we yeah, that's kind of the, the set up for us. Um, the last few weeks have been pretty tough for this farm as it is dry. Uh, the place got very dry. Our growth rate there about two weeks ago came down to twenty six. Um, uh, it has picked up to thirty four last week, and we had a growth today of seventy three. A demand of forty five. So we have our budget now done for our autumn, and we're just pushing into. Probably pushing into comfortable enough positions from the one that has fallen. 
And if we just chat about the slide here, Janet, in front of us here, that's, that's displayed, I suppose you're growing a lot of grass year in, year out. Um, and over the yeah. last couple of years, you're growing around 14 tonnes. Yeah. Um, I suppose you have been measuring with, with quite a long number of years. And I suppose so, yeah, you... yeah, we started measuring grass in 2008, uh, during the Scotch Group in 08. And our protein has risen consistently every year um, as we just put more emphasis on measuring grass. Okay. Um, so you can see there, I suppose, the farm is, gr farm is growing about 14 tonne there on average. Um, 7.2 grazings off each paddock um, and over a cut of silage um, from each paddock as well. So I suppose it's, it's, it's a farm that is growing a good bit of grass. Uh, Pre-grazing yield, I suppose, is, is on the button as well. They're just over 1,500, uh, 1,567. Um, and you can see there there's a number of walks per farm that I suppose there is a lot of effort and time going into grass measuring on, on John's farm with 42 measures um, two measures done um, and you can see there days at grass I suppose there, there's one thing that John is, is, is all about is that cows should be grazing grass they shouldn't be inside standing on concrete so every day um, that, that there's grass there for them they will they will be put out um, so maybe if we if we move on to the next slide there um, again this just reiterates I suppose the, the work and time that John puts into um, into doing farm covers. Um, John, roughly how long would it take you to do a farm cover? So roughly about an hour. So it's a 35 hectare block. Yeah. And uh, or we'll, uh, we'll get a sort. And it's yeah. about setting up the indoor walk. It sets up the farm for the week. We know exactly where the covers are going every day. And we can identify the paddocks that need to be grazed straight away. And John's about making a plan and doing it. Yeah, and I suppose, you, again, from the slide that's that's displayed on the screen here again, you can see, I suppose, that August, September, October, there's a lot of covers um, being completed in, in that area. And I suppose from looking at pasture base, I suppose we can see that there is a major drop off um, come August and September. Um, we'd say in July, we'd be averaging about, um, farmers would be averaging over four and a half covers um, per week, or sorry, for the month. Um, and then when we come into August, it's, it's done less than three and a half covers per month. So I suppose we can see that there is a bit of a drop off um, when it comes to um, covers in August. Um, so, then Johnny, it, so that the, October is a very, very important month for us here. Uh, we have a compact heavy in springtime, right? And we need to have grass on the farm in springtime, right? And if we get her on October, if we go too low in October or November, um, with the back loss starting off in uh, the following spring. So the slide is showing five metres in October and uh, that's very important to the whole thing. Okay, so if, if we move on to your budget, John, um, I suppose just just for everyone, I suppose just to give an explanation of, of what's being displayed here on the screen, um, there's quite a lot of figures and, and take no notice of them for the moment, but um, I suppose just a budget in simple terms, I suppose it's a way to guide you um, or to guide your farm from today um, and we've gone right up until um, until closing. Um, so you, you can see, I suppose, we can see the farm cover on the farm it is about 6.30 today. And I suppose we, we need to, I suppose, peak it, as John says, around 1,200 um, the last week of September. Um, but I suppose you've already alluded to, John, that, that you have a target, I suppose, to close up as well. So I suppose you kind of work, you work from your 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 target in the win in the closing cover and you walk backwards. Would, would that be fair to say? That's right, yeah. So the two key figures for me in the budget today are 1,200 by the 20th of September and 800 on the 1st of December. Right. There are two key figures and we walk out there. So we build to the 1,200 from today until the 20th, whether it means increasing supplement or taking over the messy paddock and part of time about growth is running ahead. And it comes back to our budget. So we'll walk our farm weekly and we'll correlate between our growth rate and demand and we'll, we'll work off that to get to the 1,200 as close as we can. Yeah, and I suppose just to describe the budget here, I suppose, you know, we can see on the left-hand side here how much land is available um, on, on the farm. We know how many cows are on the farm um, and we, we have their intakes, grass, grass meal and silage. Um, and then I suppose in the middle of the screen there, we have this projective growth rate. Um, so John, I suppose, has a bank of knowledge or a bank of information built up on pasture base. Um, so we can easily calculate, I suppose, 
what is the average growth rate um, in, in the autumn for his particular farm. Um, so I suppose by using uh, the demand and our predictive growth rates, we can then calculate um, what will the average farm cover be, or we, we can give it a pretty good stab at what, what it will be in a couple of weeks' time or in a month's time uh, using the predictive growth rates. Um, so I suppose, John, just, just to throw a few questions at you, and again, if anyone does have questions, you can just log them in the Q&A function there um, at the bottom of your screen. Um, I suppose over the years, John, have you, have you had problems hitting the target of 1,400 or of 1,200 um, in the end of September? Yeah. Or, or, or what happens if you, if you don't yeah. hit that target? So absolutely, yeah, would have been a problem in hitting the 1,200, maybe getting as far as 1,000, right? And not getting that last 200, uh, worked on with 1,000. Uh, come the first week of October, cover started crashing. So you were introducing silage in the diet, right? So that had a knock on effect. You were affecting clean outs or graze outs and uh, affecting milk salads. But since we started using the budget, we're, we're able to monitor it weekly, get the cover up there, right? Uh, and just keep the grass in the diet for longer. Okay. But without, without having to introduce the silage. And if it starts to run ahead of you, John, what's, what's the plan if, you know, so the water is... is yeah, so last, from the side earlier on, so we did four walks last year in August, right? So if it's going to start to run ahead of me, so uh, we're currently on three kilos a meal to drop to two, to drop to one. But if it does run ahead of us, we will just, if they're scrappy paddocks, we're just going to be able to metal light cover and can tidy up the team. Right. 80% of the farm has probably been either pre mowed topped, or have silage cut off it as present, right? So there are still a few paddocks that would, if an opportunity comes, we we'll take them. But okay. only if we're running ahead. And that, that'll be in the next week or two. So you're, you're happy enough with the cool. Happy enough with the quality on your farm, so you're you're able to build high high covers. You have the quality issues. Sorry. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good at the moment, yeah, because our farm cover was so low last week. Things were just cleaned out well, so it probably puts us in a, a good position that we can start from a good base. And I suppose, what advice would you give to guys maybe that that are are new to measuring or, or maybe haven't done a budget before? Um, advice: I just tell them to number one, walk your farm. Do and and put in and set up your budget, but you have to walk weekly because there's no point in walking, do your budget and put it in the drawer. You have to monitor it weekly and act on act, act on the figures to either increase supplement or, de or decrease supplement. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. And uh, I suppose, have you um, ran into problems with high covers, John? I, I know on the next screen here that, that, that we have a couple of pictures of. I suppose the, the herd of cows out grazing. Um, we can see this picture here, cover of probably over 2,000 anyway, I suppose, um, last autumn. Um, how, how do you get cows out to grass or what's your, what's your practice or what's your, your golden rules or your go-to for, for getting so have, to grass? We have good infrastructure in the farm, right? But as I said earlier on, like this paddock with 2,000 plus in it, like I target these paddocks for dry days. Uh, right. we, use, we use back fencers. We have here, we have this, our water trucks are central in all our paddocks, right? So that's another advantage to us. But we use back fencers, spur roads, whatever has to be done, if needs be done. But primarily, we will target these heavy covers on the drier days. We will skip out of these if the weather breaks down and maybe take out 13 or 14 hundreds of lighter covers just to make, just to incre make sure that we get a good graze out. Right. And um, I suppose our, our, your block grazing then for 12 hours with, with, with the herd, John, is it? So, yes, so these, yeah, when, you, when we hit the last round, all grazings will be more than likely 12 hour allocations. Okay, okay. And maybe, Joe, if we just go back to your, the budget there a second, just, just for one, one final comment on it. I suppose we can see there, John, that you're milking 105 cows at the moment, but there, when, we, when we move into, I suppose, the end of November, and, and, and our October and into November, we can see that the cows are, cow numbers are dropping off. Um, so you're, you're drawing off cows there. That's right. I think John, John might be gone from us. So I suppose you can see the numbers of cows there are just decreasing from, a, from 105 down to 95. That's right. Drawing right. off first calvers and tin cows there. So 
I suppose the golden figures for you, saw John, is, is the cover at closing, 1st of December. The 1st of December and the 1200 at the peak. And, and, our, and this budget is subject to change. You can get a very wet week in the middle of it and grow at least drop. So, it, you know, it's, it's, you have to constantly monitor, monitor it. Yeah. I suppose it, it's a small bit like, I suppose, going going a trip to Dublin. I suppose you, you kind of, from Cork to Dublin, you, you can put in the shortest distance um, and some there might be an accident or something that you need to go back off the motorway, and then you might you might have to come back on it again. So I suppose it's it's constant to change, and I suppose the the end goal I suppose never changes. That that's, sure. that's the big thing. Um, and then if we just we just go through, through a couple maybe a few final questions, we get a few final comments off you, John. Um, then I suppose these covers of, of, of two, two and two, three, I suppose, John, a question that we'd often get at a discussion group is, is production, is production uh, suffering because of these high covers or do you do anything different in order to prevent um, maybe production from suffering? Are, you, are the covers working too hard? I don't think they are. It gets down to, the, it gets down to what, what way the paddock has been treated through the year. If the paddock has been grazed out properly in the grazing's previous, then there's no issue. I have no issue with cows grazing two and a half thousand, two thousand hundred once if I can keep silage out of the diet. Yeah, so you, you, you that is the you, killer. You, if you silage in the diet, you want a cow to eat two and a half thousand, you want to be struggling. So, you're, 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 again, you're. so it gets back to get your cover up that you can exclude the silage. And we will graze these constantly. And I would hold, even if our cover is dropping faster than we like in October, I would graze these out before we introduce silage. Okay, so you're you're keeping the cow focused on, on grazing grass I'm all the time. Grazing grass only. Yeah. Yeah, very good, yeah. Um so I suppose that that's just an example, I suppose, of, of a dry stock farmer. Or sorry, not a dry stock farmer, uh, a dry soils uh, farm. So we're we're building to twelve hundred on that particular um on that particular farm. So I think we, we'll give it to John Douglas uh, and we'll we'll talk um to David Brady. Thanks, Mihan. Thanks, John. That was a very comprehensive overview of it and Look, David, it's going to be the same principle, but maybe things are managed slightly different because of the heavy soils. But look, David, I suppose I'll let you introduce yourself. You were the Grassland Merit Award winner for most improved grassland uh, last year. Um, you're you're from Cavan, so maybe I suppose tell us how how um, I suppose about the farming in Cavan. I suppose who's working with you and what what sort of system you're on. Yeah, um, farming in Cavan. Uh, we're milking 109 cows this year um, on a 40 hectare platform. Um, my mother and father is still uh, involved in the farm, but we have free range hands as well. So, look at different students maybe help throughout the year, but it's mainly myself uh, and my father does most of the work. Uh, but he's he's heading for retiring, so it's it's uh, myself. But look at um, I'm grass measuring probably since 2015. Uh, I did the grass course and, and started measuring since then, and uh, I also joined. Uh, the heavy soils, part of the heavy soils program since then as well. Yeah. So, um, and I suppose how has that helped? I suppose managing in the shoulders the year, and I suppose focusing on the autumn for this event, David. Um, what you look at managing? The, yeah, look at uh, we're, we're managing the farm, heavy farm. It just look at you could be managing it. It's all year round managing it because it can be wet and in the middle of the summer as quick as the the winter time. So. Uh, Look, a grass measuring has changed the farm. I reckon we're growing more grass, better quality grass, and uh, doing better graze outs. And uh, our mill solids are lifting on the back of that uh, yeah. year on year. So, so, so last year, it was in the heavy soils, you produced 520 kilos of mill solids from yeah. 910 kilos a meal. So, you know, that's excellent performance on a heavy soils farm. Because, you know, if we, if we look here at your days at grass, uh, it's 260 from the pasture based farm summary. So everyone has a farm summary on the report section. Shows the days you first graze versus the last day grazing. For for David, yours about 260, but we're allowing that heavy soil. You're not going to be out every day in between that. So we, we're maybe closer to 240. So you could be a month behind drier soil. So do you know how important I suppose is it to to have good quality I suppose grass and and soil is supposed to make up that deficit and I suppose try and. Do you know, well, still hit the targets for for that, that the dryer farms are hitting. It's a uh, very important to have quality silage. It's it's one thing because look at uh, the the reality is in the springtime we're going to be 
back in at some stage. It usually it ends up you you could be out in February and, and you're back in for a week in March. Um, and the same can go on uh, in the in the autumn time. Like that, no more than John, we try and keep silage out of the diet as long as we can, especially in the autumn time. But uh, you could end up being in for a week and uh, monitor and, and then get back out when it dries up. But uh, if we can, we'll try and we don't mind switching the cows on to silage and back off it to stay at grass. Uh, I, I think it doesn't affect them and you get better graze outs when they're on grass only, if we can at all. Yeah. Okay. And, and like John, then you're. You're doing over 40 walks in the year and I think like that you're sort of walking weekly during sort of August, September, October up until your house as well. Yeah, yeah, we're walking weekly and actually this year we're nearly walking more often than because of between drought and, and maybe uh, we wouldn't have been in as bad as drought as maybe John but uh, when we did expect things to, you're sort of planning all the time and and you're expecting growth rates to drop and maybe some of the time they didn't, but um, uh, we've been walking nearly every four to five days uh, during the summer, maybe not so, yeah. so much. Uh, when you would have normally done it in May, we didn't need to because the gr- grass wasn't growing, but we've done it since, so when it did start to grow. so uh, Well, like I suppose that, the, between, between this was the extra walks, Dave, and maybe the lower growth rates, that pre-grazing yield that was sort of the average for the last couple of years at 15.90, that's down around 12 Twelve hundred this year. So, if it, when when I look through the the data earlier on, so that's probably a mixture. was of lower growth rates, but probably more walking as well and, and tightening up that yeah big grazing yield. Yeah. So, we might fire on then, uh, Joe. Um. So I suppose David, these are your maps there. I suppose you're you're um you're very keen. I suppose on having these maps in the shed, and you can see there. You can might as well explain yourself, David. What what have you got on the maps? Uh, what you look at the the farm is soil sampled every year, so we have pH, P, uh, and K on it. So uh, it's very easy to to go in and take a quick look at it every year. Yeah. At the start of the year for uh, fertilizer plan and stuff, and even if you're checking throughout the year where you want to go, you can always go in and have a picture on your phone, and it's just very handy. It's it's a, it's a quick synopsis. Yes. And I suppose when you don't have a, a lovely square farm, David, like that, it's handy to have the maps there too. You can see they're frag- fragmented. Uh, so. Yeah, well, it's not. Yeah, it's not straightforward. No. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and again, I suppose uh, something to highlight maybe from your farm is that the, the the cows are housed in two sheds, so it is extra work when they're in and out. So keeping them out for a, a day oh, as long as possible. Yeah, well, look at yeah. Work. Yeah, the main yard is only forty cube, so look at. Uh, like that, we're walking. Uh, if cows have to be housed, we're walking. I suppose to give us that extra nudge to try and keep them out. Uh, yeah. But they end up they'll be walked some of the time in in uh, October, November to shed. So look, it has to be. And and in the springtime, once we cross forty cows calved, which is usually within a week or two, um, we're, we're we're walking. So um, yeah. It can be difficult to do three hour allocations as well, just because of that. But look, it we we. Do our best. And Dave, you might just comment there on some of those pictures. There. I'm not sure if any of those paddocks have the the gravel molen in, but I suppose as part of uh, being on a heavy soils when you're reseeding, you are gravel molen paddocks. And and that, how how has that helped the drainage? I suppose on your field. Well, sure. Look at it has um, some of the. There's actually the first one there nearest the lane is 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 gravel tunneled. The other ones up the on, with the with the with the roadway up through them, they're not because they're drier. Uh, look at it changed as a paddock from being the wettest on the farm to probably being one of the driest, and their go-to paddocks in, uh, in the wet. Um, now I know the the heavy soils have done. Uh, testing on it and they reckon 70% of the water that falls is gone in 24 hours so if you can let those paddocks sit for 24 hours the, 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 they're pretty okay to go to Yeah. so um, it, it's a big help it's a big game changer on some paddocks we've switched them around from growing 3 or 4 tonne to 10 tonne and it means then they go to paddocks in the spring and autumn and drier paddocks for us to manage So in terms yeah. of like grazing targets and your average farm cover you know, that has helped you, I suppose, increase your capacity to build grass in the show, you know, well, sorry, coming into the autumn time because you have more chance to graze it now. 
Yeah, probably look at and in the past maybe letting it go too high. It's very easy to grow uh, and let it get too high. And uh, like I would have been understocked in the past, and yeah. and the farm cover would got it maybe out of control. So look at we're managing it better now, and and don't want to cross a thousand of an average farm cover at that around the twentieth of uh, September, and uh, and graze it down to about five hundred. So. Um, 550 just to have grass in, in, in the spring as well to have good quality grass in the spring and not be carrying real heavy covers yeah through. so just looking at your budget then david i suppose similar um your your walk uh, this week was around 550 this your average farm cover yeah. now you've got rain today so i presume you're probably predicting that the growth rate will jump for next week yeah, I'd, ima- I'd imagine it will. Like we would have been, it's surprising. I, I looked last year. This time last year, we had a, a, we were ten mils or over ten mils. Uh, the farm was wet, whereas this year we we're in sixty mil soil moisture deficit uh, at the moment. So look at today would have changed that a lot. So I expect the growth rate to to probably hit the eighties or nineties. Yeah. In the coming days, and 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 the farm will grow a lot of grass over the next few weeks. Yeah, so if we look at your stocking rate there, the most two point nine, and that's with that's with I think there's I think there's um there's a paddock out for receding, yeah, yeah, a paddock out for receding that won't be back in until early September. So you can see there the change in area influences your change in demand. Um, yeah. So I suppose with that, um, you're you're basing these growth rates for the month really in the mid fifties. So you know if you get a couple of weeks now growing seventies, eighties, that obviously will change your budget like. I suppose at the minute there, you're looking at the growth rate and demand. And if everything sort of grows normal and, and stays normal, you'll sort of hit your target okay. But if you get a couple of weeks now of, of big bursts of growth, what do you think, uh, what, what's your plan, David, I suppose, if your farm mm-hmm. cover would say on the 20th of August, it's supposed to be about 6, 6.30. If it's up at 800, we'll say, what's your plan? Uh, no more than John. Look, we would be walking the farm every week, well, probably every four to five days still for uh, and keeping an eye on it. And like that, we'll take out some paddocks is probably what's going to have to happen. We take out some and, and, and just keep an eye, keep us close to our our, our target cover on the budget and, and just uh, just keep keep on top of it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so and how da- how David are you supposed you managing like I suppose grazing covers even of seventeen eighteen hundred on on your farm could be more of a challenge than grazing we say covers of close to two and a half on like St John's we just say now for for this example so how do you go about you know ensuring that the cows that the grass you're growing and building up here the cows can actually utilize it. So the most important thing is infrastructure, I suppose, and, and uh, we've put a lot of emphasis on it, and we 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 are continually at it. Paddock access, uh, trying to have entrance and exits, a number of them into paddocks, and uh, saving our drier paddocks for wetter days, and and going to wetter paddocks and you know dry days and stuff like that, and just uh, managing it better that we yeah. can graze them. So there's a lot of flexibility on the heavy soils, isn't it? Like the, the oh, there is, yeah, yeah. yeah. Graze um, what you can, when you can. Yeah, and sure, look at like that. It's it'll be twelve hour breaks, and look at on 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 the farm here. I suppose heavy soils. You're never you're never very far away, not far away from twelve hour breaks. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. you know. So when when would you normally start the twelve hour breaks? Would be towards the end of August or. Ah, uh, sure. Look, we'll, yeah, we will. We'll we'll start them in August. Yeah, we will surely. Uh, look at with drought and different things, we've been at it uh, some of the summer here, just keeping on top of things because look at it. It's been a hard year. No more than you alluded to, to manage grass. I, I find it one of the harder ones because it comes in peaks and troughs very quickly. Yeah. Um. So look at. Uh, very good. Um, Joe, we might skip down there. So, yeah, so this is just, I suppose, that that phase was sort of the building phase. So if we look for when you start, I suppose, closing into October, um, David, like, where's your where's your um, target at the end of, we'd say, well, when you're housing or at the 1st of December? Yeah, which, look, we'll be housing, as I always say, if it gets to the 1st of November on this farm, uh, we're happy. 
Yeah. So look, we've got a few days past it and times, and we've been in before it other years. So it just depends. But if we get to the first of November, we're happy and and shit like that at, at a, an average farm cover of five fifty to six hundred, and it'll grow then for November. We'll very seldom that we're out. We're usually in, but even if we've hit the target before that. We'll house anyway. We won't go below target. Yeah. We'll we'll house the cows and. Uh, to have spring like that, you're setting up that you can get out in the springtime and we have the demand in the springtime and you have to take a chance that you're going to be able to get out. And I suppose looking at that budget, it's very clear to see there that the, the winter growth in your, on your farm and up, up that part of the country, David, it's, it can be nearly, nearly non-existent. Oh, it's, it's non-existent and then it's non-existent in the spring as well. So you have to, you have to build the grass at the back end. It's, it's very slow. It's, I'd be even a week or two behind Valley Hayes here on this farm. It's higher and colder. So uh, it's nearly the 25th of April before we get magic day before the gra- grass is growing to meet the, the farm. It's very slow in February and March. So um, you have to have it built that it's on the farm in the winter time. Yeah, yeah, very good. So again, the key there, walk in the farm weekly till you're probably till your house. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, we'll be walking the farm yeah. weekly. Definitely, and, uh, and and those surplus bales that you take off paddocks really come into their own in the shoulders for you because you yeah. have that extra winter longer winter period. So. Yeah, yeah. And you're a lot of your your even your good even your first cut sizes, David. You you usually cut it fairly good quality, isn't it? It's up on. Oh yeah, no. So we try and make as good as we as we can. We we cut trying to cut the uh, early in May. Uh, so any 70, time 78 DMD type yeah if we can yeah. yeah so you're not going to always get that with weather but you'll yeah. be trying to you're aiming for that every year yeah because yeah. look at we're going to be we're going to end up housing cows are in in November and they're going to be in usually sometime in the springtime we can't say that they're going to be out of grass full time it's not going to happen yeah perfect thanks very much David thanks super stuff thanks a million there lads so look at we just going to go through a couple of more slides before we, we we come to the to the to the end of 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 this evening's proceedings so i suppose probably just, probably just to say if there's any questions for the lads just to get them in now and we can we can put them to them there in a few minutes sorry joe yeah yeah no that's perfect and look at it's just uh we're going to look at we've looked at two budgets there and the lads are probably stocked at somewhere in around the, the 2.93 or just a little bit over three but there obviously is there's people that are stocked lower than that and people that are stocked higher than that. And look, at it does have a huge effect on the ability to build grass in the autumn. Like if we take someone that's stocked at less than 2.8, they're, it's much easier for them naturally to build that grass during August just because of the lower demand on the farm. And it's coming back to that to that calculation we already done. I think we would think, think it's very, very important. That if, if there's a take home message from tonight, is that we're buying grass at four cent in August, and we're selling it to the cows at 11 cent later on in the autumn. So it's it, the, the farmers that are at lower stocking rate are able to do that nearly organically just, ju- just due to that stocking rate factor. However, if there's people that are stocked at 3.5 plus, you know, throughout August the higher demand on farm is nearly matching growth rate. So how do we, you know, how, how do we go about doing that on farm? As we said already, if we're putting in an awful lot of meal and uh, and silage to kind of reach that higher, excuse me, reach that higher um, average farm cover, you know, it is, it can be a little bit more of a, a break even exercise. As we said already, you will grow a little bit more grass with the, um, with you know, with the higher farm, as you build a higher farm cover into the back end of the year, but still, we're 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 feeding a lot. We're feeding a lot. We're reducing days at grass with meal and silage to get days at grass in October. Okay, so it's just something to be aware of on the very very high, on the very very high stock rates. But the key thing for the high stock rates is to try and hold the rotation length, and close the farm to a minimum in a minimum of 30 days so even if we're higher stocked try and put a closing on the farm during october that we have the farm properly closed for the next spring because you know if we're only really reaching 650 or 700 um on a, a higher stock farm it can be all over in the middle of october very very live uh, very very lively and what normally happens on that is the farm is cleaned out way too low and we've put a, a huge dampener on 
you know, the, the amount of grass we have on the farm for, say, spring 2022. So it's something to be to be aware of. So, for an example, for someone that's stocked at four, as you can see here throughout the budget, and we're not going, I'm not going to go into it in too much detail because we're, 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 we are running a little bit over time, but it's just, you know, three kilo, there's a 60 or, you know, 60 of a demand pretty much all the time throughout August. So if we can kind of keep it roughly at three kilos a meal, and then if there is something with regard to silage or meal or zero graze grass coming in, which normally is coming in at those uh, at stock rates of four or four, three, you know, 3.5, 3.8, four plus that type of, that type of scenario. The key thing is to try and maintain that average farm cover. So if we can kind of maintain it at, you know, 750, 800, somewhere to that extent during, during, during uh, September, then try and manage it to close the farm correctly in the back in the back end of the year so that we're kind of saying that we're trying to close maybe somewhere in around you know the 500 to somewhere to that extent at the very end of October and then build into the 750 or whatever we want on the first of on the first of December but more than likely on those high stock farms as you are coming to the the 20 the 25th of October it's normally we're normally nearly nearly there anyways in terms of in terms of grass growth so it's just one thing to 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 be aware of you may not you know farmers that are very high stocking rates you know struggling to build build farm cover it's more of a, a i suppose the key thing is to try and maintain that average farm cover and not tank it as growth rates drop off in mid September Okay, and I suppose it's just to, 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 to stop on this for a quick second, John, it was probably a question that was mentioned earlier and high pre, higher pre-grazing yields affect overwinter growth. And I suppose, you know, the key thing to remember about these high covers as we, uh, uh, as, 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 you know, if you were to graze, say, a 14, 1500, 1600, as opposed to a 22, 2300, the grass plant is in the vegetative stage, okay? So it, it, we have the ability to build very high quality grass. The OMD, so the, the, the organic matter digestibility is very consistent in the, ba in, in, in the back end of the year, even on very high cover. So we've got, a, we've got a super quality feed. And the research tells us some of Sophie Evers' work and Brendan Horn's work there in, in Moore Park tells us that grass growth over the winter is not affected on the heavier covers and the higher a higher average farm cover will grow about three kilos per day so if over a, a you know i suppose 100 100 day period in the back end of the year we're probably growing as john said about somewhere between a, a half or between a, a quarter and a, and, a, and a half a ton of extra dry matter on higher average farm cover plots okay so it's just i suppose a, a bit of a misnomer out there about over winter growth is affected Lastler coming coming towards the end now. Where when do I start building grass on the autumn? Okay, so <clears throat> this is a guide, and again, you know, this is very variable in terms of the you know the year. As we said, it's very very you know this year isn't just isn't just quite as simple. But a guide for farmers is that people who are stocked, you know, maybe say three point five plus on the milking platform, you know, are are pretty much needing to start immediately now building grass anyone that stocked it in around three in the milking platform around the end of the first week or the second week of august and then farmers that are stocked that are in around 2.5 livestock units to the hectare in around the third week of august is a, is a good time but then again the key thing to this to this whole jigsaw is walking the farm weekly because of as we said as the lads were saying earlier if we get a wet week we get a week of slower growth all of a sudden our farm cover, we graze a few heavier covers off, our farm cover can change very, very lively. So it's just something to keep, to keep, to keep an eye on as we move through the autumn. And just to touch on fertilizer for, for the minute. And again, it's probably something that's very topical at the minute due to, I suppose, look at number one, environmental restrictions going forward, plus the uh, how fertilizer has gone through the roof in price. So it's just to quickly look at some research from Johnstown Castle, where there was 30 kilos of nitrogen per hectare, 24, 25 units spread at the start of each of three months, August, September and October on a trial basis. OK, so uh, on a trial basis, we had the 30 kilos of N, uh, N, N applied, as you can see here on the, the three bars on the, on the, on the screen in front of you. Okay, so 
for every kilo of N applied in August, the response is 27 kilos. Throughout September, or sorry, on the 1st of, 1st of August was 27 kilos. 1st of September was 19 and 10 in August. So as you can see, obviously in the green, yellow and, and red, obviously we're not allowed spread in, in, in October. But I suppose a question I would put to people tonight is, <clears throat> Are we spreading our fertilizer too late in September? Can we move that, you know, that that if we're if we're if we're going with an application in August and an application in, in September, can we move those forward to the first week of the month? And can we put out a slightly heavier application in August to drive the grass that's grown and reduce the amount that's spread in early September? Because you know, I suppose. When it is, we're looking for, for, from a fertilizer, we're looking for a response. And the more grass that we can grow on the farm in August, the better response we can get is essentially, you know, it's better, it's more, it's more money in our pocket. So if we take that first example on the right-hand side of the page, for every 30 kilos, the 30 kilos of N, growing uh, 27 kilos of grass, in August, it's going to grow about 810 kilos of grass on that, on, 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 I suppose, on, on, that, on that plot. Whereas putting that equivalent 30 kilos out in September, on the first week of September, is growing about 570. So if, we're, if, we, need to grow, if we need to grow the grass, what we're saying is more of a, a focus on putting that, putting that fertilizer out in August. When our ground conditions are better, we have longer days, you know, soil temperatures are higher, so when we have fertilizer that's at a high price, better bang for our buck during the month of August. And Joe, just on the sum that you did there, so basically in terms of days at grass, that 810 kilos, that'll, that's, that's worth about 100 euro. Uh, and the 570 yep. is worth about <clears throat> 70 euro. So you're yep. nearly, you know, and that 30 kilos of N per hectare will cost you at the moment, it's, it's probably, it's, it's over a euro a, a kilo now. Maybe it's it's getting one fifteen, one twenty a kilo, so um, yeah. it's probably costing in or around 30, 35, 36 euro. Uh, so you're doubling your money. You're only doubling your money if you put it out, we'd say in early in September time, whereas you're probably tripling it if you get it out in August. Well, I think yeah, that's bang on. I just was just doing just doing a quick out calculation out there, John. If it's at a, if 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 say we take for example, urea is at four sixty a ton. And there's forty six percent. That's forty six, you know, four hundred and sixty kilos. Yeah, that's the euro a kilo. That's yeah. the euro a kilo. So if we and we get a response of twenty seven kilos, that that's working out at, at at the eleven cent for autumn grass. Every kilo of nitrogen is 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 giving us three euro grass. So yeah. putting the grass, putting the fertilizer out in in August is going to give us better bang for our buck. The other thing is, was on the slurry side of things, I suppose, Joe, some farmers will still have slurry in the tanks or, or maybe more dirty water type stuff. Uh, so, you know, again, like the like the fertilizer um, we're spreading, if we get out to slurry a bit earlier too, then we're going to get a better response too. If it's in the tank and you, you, you're going to need to get rid of it, getting it out earlier is better. You're coming into a longer rotation now, 25, 30 days, um, generally more moisture around. So, you know, mm-hmm. using the low emission slurry spreading, uh, and long rotations should be no problem with that um, as well. So, Perfect. Okay. So I suppose, look at, just to summarize on a, on, on a few key points that we have, we have chatted through tonight. So what you do in August has a direct impact on both the autumn and then the following spring grass supply. So by building a bank of grass in autumn, we allow the farm to kind of graze away you know, uh, we, we allow that we have a bank of grass to graze away in the autumn, but also the bank of grass helps us to close the farm in rotation as we move through late September and in and, and, and throughout October. And, and I suppose there will be a bit of grazing on dry farms, you know, during the early part of November. So I suppose another thing, the highly stocked farms, we just we must get moving on on building earlier in the in the in the in the spring. Investing 40 euro in, in building grass will return 110 euro. It's a super return on an investment. Completing a grass, complete a grass budget for the autumn on Pasturebus Ireland and continue to walk the farm weekly. And also one, the final, final point that we have just discussed there, the fertilizer response is, you know, is, 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 is huge in early, in early August. So 
make use of that and especially for people who are who are tight on grass on the farm you know it's a it's a great we're getting a great response from fertilizer in early august and it's questionable sometimes the fertilizer that goes out because farmers are nearly thinking oh look at the deadline is the deadline is wednesday i'm going to have to go out with 15 or 20 units or whatever it is we should be looking at it from a return from the from the from 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 what we're getting what bang for our buck we're getting okay so look at We've come to the come to the end of the proceedings tonight. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank David and John. I think it was a, a, a very worthwhile, um, very 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 worthwhile um, discussion this evening in terms of closing. You know, I suppose building grass for the autumn on both a, a both a, a very very dry farm and a, and a heavy soil, a slightly colder farm. Um, up on the no more not than the northern half of the country, I think it gives us a great balance. We got a great, uh, a great experience on 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 two completely well two two different budgets. Um, I'd also like to thank John John Douglas, my colleague uh, in Grass Ten, and Me O'Leary, the coordinator of Pasture Base Ireland. And just lastly, just to thank the sponsors of the the Grass Ten program, which is Chagas, the Department of Agriculture, Irish Farmers Journal. AIB, Grassland Agro, and FBD. We'd like to thank you, thank you for, for everyone that tuned in tonight. And we will be returning with a webinar later on uh, in around the, the first week of October just to discuss closing for the autumn, similar enough to what we talked about tonight, but just closing, closing, closing the farm that we have, you know, a grass supply there for the springtime. So thanks again to everyone, and we'll talk to you in early October. <laughs>